It's a rainy night in this run-of-the-mill city street. Ellen Langton and her husband are indoors, relaxing in front of the TV. Suddenly, a sound quite unlike raindrops starts hitting their roof. It's too wet and cold to venture outdoors, so they go to bed. When we came out next morning, there was fish lying on the ground here and along the garden, some along the window ledge and some on the path. And then I had the builder and uh, when he put the ladders to get on the roof, they were all on the roof as well. Well, I thought that um, someone was playing a prank on us, you know. Being the builder was here, I thought perhaps he was having a laugh. Even though it had been raining cats and dogs, where on earth could 30 to 40 smelt and flounder have come from? Because one of the neighbours said, well, did a cat put one up there, you know, drop it on there, but was it a bird? I said, well, we don't know. The paper came and uh, the photographer came and took photos of the fish and interviewed my husband. And uh, then they were taken to the museum. The fish found their way here to London's Natural History Museum and fish curator Oliver Crimmen. I knew that it had been reported in the past that fish had fallen from the sky with rain, but I had the idea that it was associated with tropical climates and, and it was an exotic phenomenon. So to get a call saying that there'd been fish falling from the sky in London seemed very bizarre to me. But then another call and another, it started to add up that something interesting was going on. After examining the fish, Oliver was able to be pretty certain where they were from. Not the sea, but London itself. The interesting thing about them being smelt and flounder is these are the most common fish in the nearby Thames. But the Langton's home is a mile away from the river. So unless they dropped out of a plane or were dropped by birds, how had they got there? The usual explanation for this is that a water spout, that's a, a cyclonic wind moving over water, can pick objects up. Now we know whirlwinds can pick up quite heavy objects. So traveling over water, there's no reason why they, they couldn't pick fish off the surface. 